Hey guys, it's Charles with Shutterstock, and in this video, we're gonna learn how we can process multiple photos quickly using Adobe Bridge. We'll look at how to quickly apply color corrections from one photo to multiple photos, how to automatically export multiple images to formats like JPEG or PSD and resize them automatically if needed, and how to quickly batch rename a group of files, which is perfect if you're gonna be sending files to clients or for just your own organization. Knowing how to do these steps in Adobe Bridge can be a big time saver. I use them all the time. So let's go ahead and roll the intro and jump over to Adobe Bridge. All right guys, just in case you are brand new to Adobe Bridge, you can download it from the Creative Cloud desktop application where you download all your other Adobe apps. It'll have the black icon with the letters BR on it. And again, it'll be available down here kind of in the available in your plan the apps you can download from there. You'll also need to download Photoshop because that application works kind of in conjunction with Adobe Bridge. And you wanna make sure you download the same version of Adobe Bridge that you have of Photoshop that just make sure everything works compatible together. And this is similar to what you'll see when you first launch Adobe Bridge. Adobe Bridge is essentially a application to allow you to organize your files and manage them a lot easier and simplify some tedious tasks like what we're gonna do in this video. So the first thing I need to do is navigate to the folder that has my photos in it. You can see this is basically just a layout of all of the drives and folders I've got on my computer. And I've just skipped ahead here to where you can see I have a folder set up and we can double click into this and you can see I have some photos in here that we're gonna be working with. So I'll just show you guys a few quick things that'll make using Bridge a little bit easier. As you can see in this folder, these are a bunch of drone photos that I took. And when I took these photos, it took a raw photo and a JPEG photo for each photo here. So that's why I kind of have duplicates of every photo in this and they're unorganized. And if you come down here to the bottom, you can actually size up or scale around the thumbnails. So you can kind of adjust the preview there. And then you have a few other ways kind of changing what's displayed. So yours may be a little bit different than this. And if it is, you can just change that here. And then in this case here, like I said, I have the raw images, which are a .dng and .jpg images here. And I'd like to sort those so they're all not mixed together like we see them right now. So if we come up here, you can see sort by file name. That's what it's set to currently. So I'm gonna change this to be by type. And now you can see we have all of the DNG images here lined up in a row, and then it goes down to the JPEG images. Just makes this a little bit easier for us to kind of organize and look at these files. Now I'm gonna be working with the raw images because those have a lot more data to them, and I recommend doing that if you have raw images. But everything I'm gonna be doing, you can also do to JPEG images if that's all you're working with. So let's come back up here. Again, here are my raw images. Now one thing with these photos from this shoot, a lot of them are kind of underexposed. And there's a few a little adjustments I'd like to make to the raw file. And I'm gonna make this to one of these files and let's just go ahead and jump into that real quick. So I'm gonna select this image right here and you can either double click on it or in this case, I'm going to right click and just select open in camera raw. And that will immediately open up camera raw and allow me to make a lot of these adjustments that I want to make on this image. So if I come over here to basic, you can see we have things like the white balance, the exposure. So I'm gonna increase the exposure on this image. Cause like I said, a lot of these were kind of underexposed when I took them. And if you need to adjust the white balance, this is a nice way you can do that too. You have plenty of options here like auto or set it to daylight, things like that. So I could adjust this. I'm gonna leave it as shot, but I'm gonna move the tint over just a little bit for this photo. And if you've never worked with camera raw and you're a little unsure about what a setting does, just highlight your mouse over it and leave it there and it will kind of pop up an info box there and tell you what it does. Now I'm gonna come down here. Another thing I like to adjust on these is with the optics. So if I toggle this down, I can select this to remove the chromatic aberration. So I'm gonna check that on. And then you also have this use profile corrections. So with a lot of cameras and lenses, they will automatically be picked up by camera raw. So you can check this on. And a lot of times it will correct kind of any distortions you've got with that lens. And if you want to, you can come in here and you can actually set this manually if you want. I'm not gonna worry about that with this image in this case, but that's something else that you definitely may want to experiment with. And so right now I'm pretty happy with the changes I made to this one specific image. So I'm gonna come down here and click done. And when we do that, we will see it's reflected now here on the thumbnail, it's been updated. And we can also see there's a little icon up here, a little settings icon, and that indicates to us that we have made some changes to the raw file. So I'll click away from that just so we can see there's that icon there. Now, obviously we don't wanna to have to go through and do these changes to each one of these photos. So a cool thing we can do to speed all this up, I'm just gonna click on this photo, I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna come down here to development settings, and we're gonna select copy settings. So when I do that, I'm gonna come over here to another image. I'll just select this one. I'm gonna right click. And I'm gonna come down here to development settings again, and I'm gonna select paste settings. And this is gonna pop up this box asking us, do you wanna paste all of these settings that we copied over? And we're just gonna go ahead and click okay. 
And now we can see that image is now updated and we can see it has the icon there. So we've just pasted those changes we made to this photo to this one. And that was obviously much faster, but we can even do this even faster by just selecting all of our images. So I'm gonna click on this first one. I'm gonna hold shift and select my last DNG image down here. And I'm just gonna right click, go over to development settings and paste settings and go ahead and click okay. And now we can see all these images have been updated with those changes. So that's a really fast way you can make changes to a lot of images if you just need to go in and like maybe change the white balance or exposure on something from a shoot. You can quickly apply that to all of your images. I also wanna show that you can just click and drag if you need to select multiple photos that way. And you can just apply these to a few different photos, like maybe two or three, then make adjustments on another one and then paste that to another few photos. So you can work with it that way as well. Now that we've made our settings changes to our raw images, a lot of times you may wanna export these out to another file format that's a little more user friendly. And in Adobe Bridge, we have a nice convenient way where we can do that with all these images basically in one click. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of my photos. So I'm gonna select the first one, hold shift, and select the last one that I want to export out. And with those selected, we're gonna come up here to tools. We wanna to come down here to Photoshop and we wanna select this image processor. As soon as we select that, it's gonna open up Adobe Photoshop. So this is why it's important to have the same version of Adobe Photoshop installed as you do Adobe Bridge. And once Adobe Photoshop opens, we're gonna see this image processor settings box pop up. And this is gonna allow us to dial in the settings and save locations for our images. So you can see this option one here, it says select the images you want to process. We've already done that. That's what we did when we selected all those. So we can go ahead and skip that step. If you need to select more images, you could do that from there. Next, we have the option of where we wanna save this at. So you could select a custom folder or in this case, I wanna save these in the same file location. It'll actually create a new folder in there and it'll label it you know, whatever file format we're gonna be using. We'll take a look at that as soon as we finish this. Next, we have the file types. We can select what type of file we want to export. The first one I've got checked here is save as a JPEG. You also have the option to save as a PSD file or a TIFF file. And for the JPEG here, we can set the quality. This goes from one to 12. So I'm gonna leave it at 12, so we just get the best quality JPEG images. One important thing to note we also have here is we have this resize to fit option. If you wanted to resize all these images, you could do that as well. So I could check this, and you can see we have the width and the height here. And what this will do is actually scale your image down. It'll keep the same aspect ratio, so it wouldn't distort it or anything like that. It would just make sure that either one of these values, it's not bigger than that. And that's also convenient if you're working with a lot of different photos of different sizes. That way they can all kind of be within the same parameters there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck that resize to fit because I actually don't wanna do that on these images. And the final option we have here is to run an action. So if you're more familiar with Photoshop, you can do these things called actions where it'll automatically like apply different settings to it. If I go ahead and check this on, we can see a few of the actions that are built into Photoshop, like add a vignette here or add a frame to these images. So if you have those, or if you have a custom action that you've created, or maybe one you purchased and installed on your computer, you could run those here as well. I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck that because I don't wanna run an action. We could also add in some copyright info as well, and I'll apply that to all of our images. So now I think you guys have a pretty good feel of what's going on here with this. So once we've dialed this in to the settings we want, again, in this case, I just wanna do some JPEG images. I'm gonna go ahead and click run. And once we do that, you can just sit back and relax because this is going to open up each of our images here in Photoshop. And what it's doing is just open them up and immediately saving those out. So go ahead and just let this run its course. Don't click on anything. Just let this go ahead and do its thing and I'll pick this back up as soon as this finishes. All right, no more of those are flashing on the screen, so I assume it has processed all those images, so I'm gonna go ahead and minimize Photoshop, and we are back in Adobe Bridge here, and you can see in our folder, we have a new folder called JPEG, and go ahead and double click into that, and now we can see all of the JPEG images that we just exported from those raw files. You can see they have the updated settings and changes that we made in Camera Raw applied to them. Another shortcut I wanna to mention to you is when you select an image like this, you can just press the space bar and it will go ahead and preview that image in full screen. Uh, so that's a nice way you can kind of preview images really quickly as well. And now that we have all these images exported as JPEGs, we can see the file names are a little bit kind of not convenient for us, especially if we're gonna send these to a client. So now we can go ahead and batch rename all these files basically in one click. And this works with more than just photos, also works with video files or audio files, anything you've got that you wanna work with in Adobe Bridge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to select all of my images here. So I'm just dragging to select them all. We're gonna come here to tools. And the very first option here is batch rename. Go ahead and click that. And that will pop up the batch rename settings. And we have the option here to rename in the same folder. That's what I wanna do in this case. But what we wanna take a look at is this new file names here. And what we have here is a few different settings that we can apply kind of parameters, if you will. So the first one here is text. So I can come in here and rename this to something else. 
and that'll be kind of the first part of our file name. To make a little more sense, this come down here and look, you can see the preview. So the current file name I'm working with is DJI underscore 37. And you can see in this case, the new file name is gonna be summer underscore, and then a numerical value that I've got put in here. So let me just go ahead and kind of show you this. It'll make a little more sense. So I'm gonna title this Shutterstock. And then I like to put an underscore at the end of any text that I create, just so it kind of gives you a little more space, makes it easier to preview. So you can see here's the text parameter. And if we go down here and look, you can see now the new file name is Shutterstock. And then we have a number value, and that's what's reflected down here with this sequence number parameter. Again, I could change this to be something else if I wanted this to be maybe a sequence letter. So you can see it says Shutterstock underscore A, but I actually want this to be a number. It makes a lot more sense. So I'm just gonna select sequence number. And then you can put in the number you want to start with. In this case, I wanted to start with one. We also have the option of how many digits you wanna have over here on the side. So you can see it's set to three digits. So it's underscore zero zero one dot JPEG. And in this case, that looks good to me. If you wanna add even more kind of parameters over here, you can hit this plus icon and you could add in another parameter here. You could do a sequence letter after that. And you can see that there. Again, in this case, I just wanna do these top two. So I'll go ahead and hit the minus sign to remove that. Now, before we rename these, one thing I always like to do is go over here and click preview. And that will show us all the current file names and what they're gonna be renamed to. And this all looks correct to me. So we've got Shutterstock underscore 01, 02. We can come down here and see all those different uh, files, what they're gonna be renamed to. I'll go ahead and click okay. And then just go ahead and click rename. And just like that, all those files have now been renamed what we changed them to. Now you guys can see a lot of the pluses for using Adobe Bridge. It takes a lot of the pain points out of kind of tedious tasks there. I also wanna mention, let me know in the comments if you guys run into any issues with this. I'll do my best to kind of troubleshoot anything if something comes up. All right guys, hopefully everything I covered in this tutorial will help save you a lot of time. Be sure to check out the other photography and video tutorials that we have on the Shutterstock channel, and we will catch you guys on the next one.